Okay, so in my last video, I was displaying the GAN 10M light. So that got me thinking, what about the history of cubing? Like back when Erna Rubik invented the Rubik's Cube, which was awful, to the X Mars Cube, to the GAN 11M Pro. So, um, before we get in, please make sure that you like and subscribe. The worst case scenario is that you unsubscribe later. But, you know, like, you may as well just do it now because, who knows? My channel could be the most popular Cuban channel. And you'd be like, hey, I'll subscribe to this guy when he only had about 30 subscribers. But, anyway, let's get into the video. So, I am looking at the speedsolving.com wiki for references so i'll leave a link for that down in the description so anyway so part one is the precursors apparently so the rubik's rubik's um invention in 1974 was um preceded by a load of other puzzles. So, in 1963, William Augustafson, what, okay, um, invented the 2x2x2 two by two by two toy, so the 2x2, two two, but it was a sphere spherical, and it had an interior sphere with grooves, and the pieces had lips. Okay. Um, in the early 1970s, Umefert experiments are slicing polyhedra into symmetrical slices and attaching them with rubber bands to a centre ball. His wooden puzzles end up in a drawer until it, 1981 when he releases the Pyramix. Oh, okay. So, in 1970, Umefert invented the Pyraminx, okay, well, a kind of Pyraminx. In, 19, seven, in 1972, Larry Nichols uh, made his 2x2 two two rotatable cube. Um, okay, so it was held together with magnets and could easily be pulled apart. So, the reason why I got this GAN 10M light is because um, my main, my previous main, the GAN 356, fell apart. So, it's kind of like that. And finally, in 1974, Frank Fox made the 3x3x3 cube with tongue and grooves holding the pieces together with the hollow center. Um, I'll see if I can find any, um, images of that, because I'm not sure what that means. I'll, um, insert that in editing, I guess. Anyway, so, from 1974 to 1977, we have a chapter called From Invention to Production. So I just realised it's going to take me about half an hour to read this whole thing. So I'm just going to be reading chap chapter names and skimming through some of the stuff. So obviously in 1974, the um, Hungarian, the Hungarian Erno Rubik invented the Rubik's Cube. So this is where it all started. From 1978 to 1979, the cube gained a following. So, it was known as the Magic Cube, which is still largely unknown outside of Hungary. So, small numbers of cubes began to trickle out into Western countries. By, 17, sorry, by 1979, the cube has become a mini craze among mathematicians. Okay? And then a few important events that happened in this time. Well, not really important, but, you know, just... I'll read them out because I need watch time. 
The Cube in 1978, August, the Cube won a prize at the Budapest International Toy Fair. Um, yeah, cool. So, from 1980, from Cult to Craze. Okay. Rubik's Cube is launched upon the world. However, events are quiet for the first six months as the Hungarian suppliers, Polytoys, gear up for production. Sales begin to surge towards the end of the year, and by Christmas, the cube craze is fully underway. So, yeah. A few honourable mentions. In 1980 July, Ideal begins two weeks of US television advertising to advertise the cube but they stopped somewhere in the middle. But however, in September of that year, they continued the campaign. 1981, the year of Cube Mania. So this is the peak of Rubik's Cube Mania and it becomes a craze across m much of the world. So, um, a few examples, oh yeah, and also if you, you may remember um, from earlier, a few more puzzles were made in this time. So, Umefa with his Pyraminx and other ones, other puzzles start to appear, the most successful of which is the Rubik's Snake. And Ideal introduces two notable shape variations of the cube, the Magic Ball or Rubik's Sphere and Magic Octagonal or Octagonal Barrel. Uh, I think I know what one of those are. But anyway, in 1981, January 24th, the cube craze begins in the UK after teenager Nicholas Hammond appears on BBC's children television, Swap Shop, and solves the cube in 37 seconds. Oh, okay. So, in 1981, 31st of January, this is very big, the Japan Cubist Club holds a speed cubing tournament in Tokyo. And the winner is Hideki Kitajima. Yeah, Kitajima? Yeah. With times of 62, 46 and 49 seconds. 52.3 second average. Man, you could have had such a good average if you didn't screw up with your 62 second solve. Okay. And... It, on 3rd of February 1981, Peter Sebastiani applies for a German patent for the 4x4 Rubik's Revenge. Right, onwards. Oh my god, there's actually a lot of action going on here. Um, Erna Rubik um, applies for a patent of the 2x2 two two cube. Um, Morwen Thistlethwaite. Devises 52 move algorithm which result, which allows any computer to solve the cube in a maximum of 52 moves. Well done, well done. Okay. Um don't think there's anything. Oh, okay. Udo Krell invent applies for a German patent for his puzzle mechanism. This will become the first mass produced 5x5. Five five as well as the basis for other puzzles such as Pyraminx Ultimate and Pyraminx Crystal. Okay, 1982, the craze continues. So, the cube is still selling, but demand falls as the year goes on. Ideal continues with its Rubik's range of cubes pro of cube products. This includes a 4x4, 2x2, and Ooh Methods is also marketing new products such as the Magic Dodecahedron or Megaminx. And the Pyraminx cube, the proper Pyraminx, is invented by Tony Durham, which is renamed the Skube after Douglas Hofstadter coins the word in his Scientific American column. Uh, wait, how is the Pyraminx called the Skube? Uh... All right, I'll be right back. I just need to do a bit of research. Okay, so I think it's just called... It was called the Pyraminx Cube at first, 
but then it was just renamed the Scoob. But other stuff that happened in 1982, the first Cubing Championship. And it was won by... David Allen wins the title, although, although Min Tai wins the title Grand Champion by beating him in a playoff. Um, I think it's... Okay, so I think David Allen officially won it, but Min Tai was just like, he did beat him at one point. So if you beat the champion, then technically you are better than the champion. Anyway, 1983, The Hangover. This is when the cube starts to decline. The craze is over. Sales have collapsed in most countries. The only significant puzzle of 1983 is the 5x5. Five five. Um, yeah. The Hungarian manufacturer, unaccustomed to dealing with consumer crazes, has effectively gone bankrupt. Yeah. Um, okay, so we get a world record set by Robert Pergel as he gets a 17.04, which is the fastest time in, a, in an official tournament until 2003. A lot of stuff happened in 2003. Um, Julian Chilvers in the UK solved the 4x4 in a time of 1 minute and 59, I think. Yeah, that's 1 minute and 59. And it's the world record for the next 20 years. Okay. And first, oh, 1983 September, the famous um, TV show... Rubik the Amazing Cube, the TV show where Rubik's Cube has a face and can talk and it just scrambles itself and you have to solve it to do something or whatever, is finally record is broadcasted on ABC television. Oh, okay, 1984 to 1995, the Dark Ages. For the next decade, Rubik's Cube becomes that frustrating artifact of the early 1980s, which has been retired to the attic or the, gar the garbage heap. Um, however, Erno Rubik returns to spotlight in, in late 1986 when the Rubik's Magic is released. Uh, fun fact, the Rubik's Magic was, I think, my fourth ever cube. So, yeah. Um... So, a bit of history, Erno Rubik's. Erno Rubik files a patent for the Rubik's Magic. Rubik Studios files a worldwide patent for an electronic Rubik's Cube. Um. Probably the only other interesting thing is in 1991, the Square One was released. Um, some say it's a frustrating puzzle, some say it's the most satisfying puzzle. That's your opinion, not mine. All right, 1996 to 2006, Renaissance. This is when the cube starts to grow popularity. As the World Wide Web, as the, as the World Wide Web reaches people's homes in the mid 1990s, there is a slow revival of cubing interest. Established cubers of the 1980s, notably Friedrich and Petrus, put their advanced solving systems online. At the end of the 1990s, a new generation of speed solvers, including Dan Knights, Matt Wilder, Chris Hardwick and Jess Bond. This leads to Dan Gosby organising the second World Rubik's Cube Championship in 2003 and the establishment of the, of the WCA by Ron Van Bruchem and Tyson Mao. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, I just want to quickly backtrack to notably Fredrich and Petrus 
So Petrus was a really good method for solving with um, bad cubes at the time because it barely required any moves. Um, obviously FMC, Petrus is a very common method for, M for FMC. It's basically where you build blocks, essentially. And Friedrich, um, this is the method that most people use nowadays. And it's really good for modern cubes. CFOP. Um, I think it's like, yeah, Friedrich invented, um, cross F to L, 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 P, L, L. He invented that method. But anyway, I believe, like, Jess Bond as well. I think she was the, um, because I know that she was, because I know that the last woman that, other than in 2003, so, yeah. In 2003, there was a female Cuba in the finals of the World Championships. But um, after that, I think the next time that happened was in 2000. Oh. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the next time that happened was in 2019. Um. Yeah. Oh, that feels embarrassing. Okay, Jess Bond is actually a man. <laughs> I just Googled him because I was like, hang on. I don't think that Jess Bond is a girl, but yeah. <laughs> that was embarrassing, anyway. So that's just me wasting about a minute of watch to about a minute of you guys as time. But anyway, so let's fast forward to 2003 because that's when all the action happened in cubing. Um, Ryan Heise publishes the first version of his intuitive um, fewest moves method online. Um, Jill's Rue publishes his new speed solving method, Rue. And in 2003, August, the second World Rubik's Cube Championship, the first one's in 1982, it's held in Toronto, Canada. Dan Knight wins the 3x3 three three final with an average of 20 seconds exactly for three cubes. Jessica Friedrich um, finishes second and David Wesley finishes third. Um, hang on. Okay, the female cube I was talking about was Jessica Friedrich. Huh. Okay, I'm re I'm just going to stop talking about this because, like, I'm getting it all wrong. Anyway, Panagiotis Verdes files a worldwide patent for a cubic logic toy allowing the constructions of cubes larger than 5x5 five five up to 11x11. 11 11. Well, we're getting more than that nowadays. I think we got, I think, like... Um, who sold a 19 by 19? I think it was Tingman. 2007 to 2010. Oh, the first speed cubes. The year 2017 is a Shanghai based website, Cube for You, selling Chinese made cubes internationally, initially as DIY kits. Okay. So, Cube for You names the cubes arbitrarily as type A, type B, etc. First three types become available in 2007. This is followed in 2008 by another three types. Eventually, it becomes clear that these types are made by five companies. Type A, um, Gujia. Type B and Type F by Sheng En. Type C by Gu Bing and Wit Eden. Type D by Yong Zhen and Type E by Diang Sheng. Although these cubes are similar in design to the original Rubik's Cube, they are generally regarded as superior by speed cubers. For nearly four years, these type cubes dominated the world of speed cubing and several models became available in each type, like type A1, type A2, stuff like that. Towards the end of this period, there are also ghost hand cubes, loosely associated with the Sheng Shao Company. There are also more Korean cube, Korean mode cubes, notably the Edison cube, but they are hard to get outside of South Korea. The final stage in this era is reached in mid-2010 with type F2 or and type A5 or type or alpha 5 cubes. Um, so notable events. 
um, in 2007 at Spanish Open 2007, um, Tibal Jinkinot, I think, Jin Jackinot, uh, Jack Jash Jackinot, or whatever. The first official three battery solve under ten seconds, nine point eight six. Well done. Um, 2008 June Verdes's Big Five Cubes, five by five, six by six, seven by seven, become available in V Cube stores. Ah, V Cube is in, in V Cube is made. The company that's barely changed. Um. Uh, just keep scrolling. All right, this is the point of which we all know cubes just got so good. 2011 onwards, second generation speed cubes. So, um, in April 2011, sees Dayan introduces Dayan Lundwi 3x3 cube, the first speed cube designed imperfectly to prevent pieces popping, falling out. This is achieved with the use of torpedoes, small pieces of plastic that link corners to edges to prevent pops. Dayan follows this three months later with the Dayan Zanchi, a cube which receives great praise from the speed cubing community. With its smoothness, corner cutting and anti-popping design, it is widely regarded as the best speed cube for the next two years. Only with the release of the Moyu Weilong in 2013 does Dayan's dominance come to an end. Henceforth, Moyu, a brand associated with Yongjun or YJ, becomes one of the dominant speed brand, speed cubing speed cube brands. So important dates in this period are um, 2011 at the Melbourne Winter Open 2011. Felix Zemdex achieves the first official three by three solve under six seconds. Felix Zemdex is in his peak. Well, no, he gets a lot better, doesn't he? But anyway, Felix Zemdex becomes good. So six, so it's uh, sub six, five point six six seconds. Okay, um, release for the day in Zanchid. Um, in the twenty eleven October um, Rubik's Cube Championship in Bangkok, um, Felix Zemdex finishes third. Obviously, isn't as dominant, and Max Park isn't a thing yet. Um. 2013, Mo Yu Wei Long. Oh, okay, okay. This is where the Felix Zemdegs time begins. 2013, July, the seventh World Rubik's Cube Championship is held in Las Vegas, USA. Felix Zemdegs wins the 3x3 final with an average time of 8.18. Max Volk finishes second and Sebastian Weyer finishes third. Okay. 2013 November, Rubik's introduces the first 3x3 speed cube. Is it really a speed cube? Can you really call it that? No, I don't think you can. Um, Felix Zemdex wins another competition in 2015. Felix Zemdex wins another comp um, world championship in Paris in 2017. Oh wait, no he doesn't, he came second, wait. He got the, um... Wait, what? Where, where's Felix Zemdex? What am, I, what am I told? I was looking at the next line. But it's actually, this is when Max Park came to life, he won it. Felix Zemdex is on the podium. So that means twice in a row, Felix Zendo didn't finish on the podium. Um, but anyway, a uh, cube for Camban Cambodia 2018 and 2018 May in Melbourne, Felix Zendex achieves the first official under 4.5 seconds solve, 4.22. So this record we all thought was unbeatable, I think. And then later on in the year, literally, uh, the Wuhu Open 2018 in Wuhu, China. Yu Sheng Du achieves the first official 3x3 solve under 4 seconds. 3.47. That record, the record was smashed. Absolutely smashed. By like, uh, by like 7 tenths of a second. It was actually amazing. And obviously the 10th um, championship 
in July 2019 is held in Melbourne, Australia. Obviously, we all know what happened. Philip Weyer won the 3x3 final with an average time of 6.77 seconds. Sean, like, Sean's only a kid, mate. How did he get second? And Sebastian Weyer finished third. Obviously, uh, Max Park finished fourth and Felix Zemdegs fifth. I believe Max finished about a hundredth of a second ahead of Felix. But yeah, and obviously that's what the um, speed cubing documentary was about. But anyway, so this was a really long video. It's going to be a nightmare to edit. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye.